As we all know, on September 24th at 2:54 hours, the two, uh, excuse me, 0, 2:54 hours uh, in the a.m., the Wilmington Fire Department received the call for a house fire on Lakeview Road, 1927 Lakeview Road to be specific. Units responding, Ladder 2, which was the first unit to be in the area on Union Street, noticed a glow in the air and asked for and requested a fourth through engine. That audio stream has been placed online by different media organizations as well as on uh, YouTube, I believe it is. So the information is pretty much not new to most people. Okay, if they've listened to it, they can hear some of those statements that are made on those recordings. Excuse me, let me turn this off. <clears throat> they see the glow, they request a fourth engine. That is a, tech, uh, a tactical practice that we use in the Wilmington Fire Department when we believe that we have a working fire in a situation. What you hear across the audio tapes is Newcastle County Fire Board notifying the responding units of reports that they are receiving via telephone call from the scene. Some of those reports indicate that there may be subjects strapped. Some of those reports indicate that individuals have escaped the fire or have left the property. The arriving units, the units first on scene, receive reports from the scene on the street that people were still trapped inside of the, the home. All right. First engine company, engine one, second engine company, engine five, and ladder two, the first on scene, all met at the front door, made entry into the property in the attempt to search and rescue anyone who may have been trapped in the facility. There was a collapse of the first floor into what is known for most people commonly as a basement. We'll call it the ground floor because it is a usable space. And most of the properties there, the ground floor has a garage in the rear, this space it's a, not a garage door, it is a sliding glass door. This space is utilized by family members and friends to you know, come in together and have parties and, and so forth in. They fell into the floor, four individuals became trapped immediately, others began to work on them. Trapped immediately and who have succumbed to their injuries are Lieutenant Christopher Leach, who has been on the job for roughly 14 years, uh, I believe 41 years old as well as coming to his injuries as firefighter Jerry Fickers. Lieutenant Leach is originally assigned to engine six. On this night, he was working in exchange for another officer and was assigned to ladder two. Okay, he was riding first front seat as the officer on ladder two. Jerry Fickus is assigned to our squad four, which is basically one of our rescue units that run around and try to help and assist other firefighters. And he was working on that unit at the time of the collapse and the time that he was inside. Firefighter Fickus was joined by other members of Squad 4 and were attempting to rescue Lieutenant Leach at the time of a collapse, which also trapped him. Those individuals, all individuals, were subsequently removed from the property, two of which are Firefighter Ardeth Hope, who's been on the job roughly 23 years, and a Firefighter Brad Speakman, who's been on the job only a few years, remain in critical but stable condition at Crozier Medical Center. Those individuals are being checked on, and please keep them and their families in your prayers. As we go through and discuss what we have for an investigation, I don't want anyone to think and take what we say out of context. So what we will tell you is that there's been questions asked about car fires or vehicle fires that may have occurred in the area prior to this fire. That information is true. There were car fires, small vehicle fires in the area. Are they connected? We cannot say that they are in this time that is currently still under investigation. We do not believe that they are at this time because of the information that we have. But we were still considering looking at forward to talking to more individuals. Right now we're being supported by the state police, uh, state, excuse me, state fire marshal's office who have been asked to take lead on the fire investigation. I asked them to take lead on the fire investigation the night of the fire because we are intimately involved and we lost two of our brothers and we have others injured. So I don't want my fire marshals to take and get involved and, and, and blinded by their emotions when dealing with the situation. So we asked for the help of the outside agency, which was the state fire marshal's office. State fire marshal's office has been joined by the ATF and some other agencies that are assisting them. We are receiving a lot of government support and helping us, and we truly appreciate that it is moving the situation on. Because of the collapse, it has taken us longer to get inside of the property to conduct a thorough investigation 
but we have done so with the help and assistance of several of our shoring and, and our collapse units around the state of Delaware and the volunteer resources that we have in the state of Delaware. We've been able to take and shore up the property to make safe entry in and continue our investigation. That investigation is ongoing. I will not report or answer any questions on the investigation other than to tell you that yes, we are in the progress of interviewing any witness and anyone that may have any information involved. If you have information involved with this fire, please call 302-576-3950 and you will be directed to the appropriate agency so that you can give your information. This is not one of those situations where we're going to say, you know, don't snitch, all the stuff that you hear commonly with criminal investigations and stuff like that. We're not there. We are simply looking for information about the fire anywhere or anybody that has it so that we can take and treat our families that have lost loved ones and who are, who are injured with the common dignity and respect that heroes deserve so we can give them all the factual information possible. All right. Memorial services. On this upcoming Saturday, there's a tentatively scheduled memorial service for both fallen firefighters. It's being scheduled with the assistance and help of the International Association of Firefighters through local president Bruce Schweiger uh, of 1590 and the assistance of all the head offices from DC. We have teams of individuals that are assisting our firefighters in preparing that and, and they're working very diligently in a short period of time as you all can expect that happens after you have a death, especially a line of duty death. We have significant amount of resources and individuals who will be coming to Wilmington to help participate with that. And I am thankful and I am humbled by all of the support that we are receiving for it. There will be also two line of duty death funerals for the both members that have passed. At this time, we have asked that people refrain from taking in contact in the family as they're going through a very difficult time. You know, uh, I've been asked several questions and I'll touch on it very briefly uh, about the difficulties that I may have as a chief speaking to these families with the loss of my own in the line of duty death. Don't focus on me. I've been there, done that. Let's focus on those who actually need to be focused on. And those are the individuals who have passed, their families, and the individuals that we have had that are injured. That's how we get through this, and we want your help getting through this. All right, those services have not been scheduled, or we're not providing you with the scheduled times at this time, so that we can make sure that we have all the resources needed to be able to accommodate the large gathering of people we expect. We don't want to push anybody away. We want your help and assistance, but we need to funnel you through the correct individuals to do so. So if you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to contact us here at Fire Headquarters. As you see, I'm joined here by Mayor Williams, and I want to thank Mayor Williams and all of our representatives from council and from the state legislatures. I want to thank our congressmen and our senators who have called constantly and continuously to get, up, get updates on where we're at. Um, if you've seen the pictures or, or any of my tweets on Twitter, you, you'll see that Vice President Biden came to the scene to, to come out and check on us to make sure that we're okay. You know that he has an intimate relationship with the fire service here in Delaware, and we have significant amount of resources that have come from the federal, state, and local uh, levels. So I want to thank everyone for that. Uh, you know, we've, we've had a difficult month, and it's going to continue to be difficult. We're going to continue to deal with things, but we're going to do so together because this is about Wilmington and our people that work here and live here. So we're going to take care of each other in doing so. Uh, Ms. Mayor, do you have anything you want to add? Good. Yes, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, WilmingtonFirefighters.org is our local union, local 1590s website, WilmingtonFirefighters.org. You can go on to WilmingtonFirefighters.org if you'd like to make any donations or to stay updated on information that we are going to be putting out in reference to the memorial services as well as the funeral services for our two fallen brothers. Uh, I, I will tell you the information is coming rapidly. There are other fundraisers going on, but I would ask you to pay attention. We still live in a society where people take advantage of those who, who are going through hardships. WilmingtonFirefighters.org is where you go if you want to donate. We have also an insurance company that is for police and firefighters run by Corporal Anthony Harris of the Wilmington Police Department who is setting up a fundraiser. 
we will make you aware. It will come either across our streaming lines or through WilmingtonFirefighters.org of any fundraisers, that, fundraisers and monies collected that will go to these families. We will not be taken advantage of by others who are just looking to take and gain from what we have lost. We're not going to play that game. If you know me and if you've seen me here before, I'm not going to hold my breath or my tongue on what I say. And I'm going to let you know that we're here to assist these families. We're here to get our people through this. I will also tell you that my firefighters in the city of Wilmington right now are hurting. And we want to thank all of the surrounding volunteer fire companies who have helped us. It's been rough. So thank you all for your assistance. And as I said earlier, I'm not going to take your questions. If you have specific questions as they relate to the ATF, uh, David in the back of the room may be able to field some of those questions, not all of them at this time. Otherwise, we will be putting out a press release. My PIOs, Battalion Chief Jobes and Battalion Chief Perkins, will be available for questioning uh, later on this afternoon as well as throughout the evening and tomorrow where we can answer a little bit more specific questions. I'm just not in a position right now to answer your questions, and I'll let it be known. Thank you very much.